a speeding bullet. If you only knew the power of the dark side. Hulk! Smash! Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. More to them than meets the eye.
Hey there, boils and ghouls. This is Chuckles the Clown here, and uh, you are listening to Chuckles Crypt. Happy Guy Falk's Day, by the way. Remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder treason plot. I know no reason why the gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. Uh, if you guys have ever watched the movie V for Vendetta, it's, uh, well, he made that, that saying popular. That poem's actually a lot longer than that, but... I will not be reading the whole thing. Uh, this isn't a chuckle spoken word, Crip? No, definitely <laughs> not. Uh, so start things off with a little nerd news. Um, I did watch, and I, I forget, uh, I'm going to apologize again for uh, us missing Halloween, but I did watch the movie Halloween. Oh, really? I've heard mixed reviews. I absolutely loved it. Now, uh, being a horror fan and whatnot, I thought it went uh, above and beyond, and... Uh, Really good flick. No, nothing too too bad um, to be watching. Uh, so let's talk all things Comic Con. Now, this year's 2018 Comic Con has a lot of good points and has a lot of bad points. I think. Uh, first of all, the good point there, um, they they fix the traffic patterns yeah, big time. And if you guys don't remember. Uh, Years past, Comic Con, uh, Rhode Island Comic Con's traffic pattern has been a cluster. Uh, this year they fixed it, and it was actually um, easy to maneuver. You could and move, you could breathe. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you, and I know I've mentioned it before, so I won't belabor the point, but sometimes at cons, the body odor game is strong, and you don't want to be crammed in with those people that oh, smell no. like a moldy basement. Yes, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit, too, about a certain something with a body odor. <laughs> Uh, but no, it, it, they actually did a really good job with the traffic. Uh, they did a really good job with the celebrities and putting them on their own floor. However, the bad side is the guests that were coming would go to that floor, and very few of them were packing the actually vendor tables right. or the dunk. Because their green room was also up there, so they really had no need to uh, to walk around if they didn't want to. Right, and it took away from some of the vendors and some of, you know that were there and some of the artists as well. So I, I think, okay, it was a good idea to put some of them up there, but maybe next year we should include some of the, I don't know, B-rated uh, guests yep. down amongst the vendors. That way... There's someone someone there for the people to go and see. Now, my booth personally was hidden in the Dunkin' Donuts Center, so it, a lot, it was last minute. A which, lot of people did not know I was there. Which, by the way, I have to give Chuckles the utmost credit for pulling a Hail Mary pass, and you know, I'm always happy to admit when I screw up. So it's the, a few days before the con. I'm looking at the map to figure out where we're going to be so I can figure out our load-in time. And lo and behold, I see no table marked Rhode Island Free Radio because, and this is embarrassing to mention, I think I filled out all that paperwork because, you know, they asked quite a few questions. I don't think I ever hit submit at the end of filling out the paperwork. Well, that would explain why <laughs> they never received yeah. it. I uh, thought that I had a problem with my bank account, but when I think back, but I also remember getting some kind of a confirmation, so maybe that wasn't it, but um, my apologies on that. Hey, we were there. Rhode Island Free Radio was supported. My Night Out Radio had stickers there, and Tony Jones and the Cretan 3 had stickers there, and myself was there. So we were well supported. However, I think um, we got to bring some uh, Rhode Island Free Radio. we got to make some banners so that they can show up. Well, we had a pretty nice banner, and then we lent it out to a certain wrestling promotion, and then I never saw it again. <laughs> yeah, I think we got to get another one rocking uh, so that we – that way we have those at the, the convention center there. Uh, let's go down to some music again. Now, tonight is all things Alice Cooper, so if you're not an Alice Cooper fan, um, too bad. You will be at the end of the show. Yeah, you will be. <laughs> and, uh, yes, I'm recycling music from the Halloween special, but nothing's wrong with a little Alice Cooper here and there. So we go down to Alice Cooper's Paranormal here on Chuckles Crypt, Rhode Island Free Radio, dot org.
I live in the absence of light And my shadow has life of its own Watching you while you sleep all alone here will you have a whole block of alice cooper i mean most of the radio stations if they play alice cooper will only play two songs yeah. not here uh we, we're giving the man a whole a whole hour for himself he deserves yeah. it i mean i don't understand why he doesn't get more radio play because it's not like his stuff is filthy you know there's some rap groups we can't play here because every single song has dirty words in it his stuff's clean and it's catchy, but he he gets no respect as far as uh, traditional radio goes. Yeah, and the thing is, too, he's a big inspiration of mine, and he was a big inspiration of a lot of shock rockers. Yeah, so it, kudos to him. Let's talk a little bit about some of the guests uh, as customers, let's say, customers for Comic-Con. And we'll start off with talking about some of the cosplay we need you to, to clarify. Customers as in patrons or guests as in celebrities that happen to be walking around. No, let's talk about patrons. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the ones coming around is cosplaying. Years past, I have made comments about cosplaying and how if you're going to cosplay a certain character, you need to somewhat look the part. Which is why I cosplay as a blues brother and not as a hot model. Yes, and Eddie cosplayed as a drunken Viking. <laughs> yes. He did very good at that. Drunken Viking tourist. Yes, <laughs> and it was very awesome cosplaying. However, I saw a lot, and there's nothing wrong with being overweight. I'm overweight. You know, it happens. Look around the room. <laughs> but We playing, could start a support group. <laughs> yeah, playing an overweight Batman just really kills it for me when you come by me. I mean... You're supposed to be Batman, not Fat Man. <laughs> well, to that. Did you see him? Oh, I saw a lot of things I probably will, will be thinking of Bleach to try to get out of my <laughs> mind. But what I got to tell you, by the way, everyone, this is uh, Psycho Eddie. I'll give them a lot of credit 
for either making the costume or trying to find a costume that will fit around them. <laughs> <laughs> so you you got to I'm uh, being a big guy myself, I know there there's a limited amount of fat characters you can play. Usually they're bad guys, and the coolest one is Juggernaut, <laughs> which is going to be hell to try to find and or make. Yeah. The rest of them, it's like a wrestling singlet and and a matching <laughs> pair of stockings or, you know, they just accentuate your fatness. So I can understand wanting to go for the cool, like Batman, Wonder Woman, Sailor Moon, you know, fill in your right. real thin one. But you got to give them credit because not only did they find it, they put it on and they were rocking it. <laughs> Some of them had no no care in the world and they, they thought they were that whatever character it was. Yeah, Fat Man. <laughs> they thought they were definitely Fat Man. And then there was Glumping Poison Ivy, uh, which was looked like more like um, oh, yes. poison a poison <laughs> Yeah, a poisoned watermelon more than it did poison ivy. Poisoned Epcot Center. <laughs> yeah, I mean there are so many that walk through this Comic Con. I think this was and I, I swear I visited DDP, and I was talking about the yoga program. Mm-hmm. I think some of these cosplayers also need to visit DDP well, and visit his yoga yeah. program. The other thing you got to think of is a lot of these people have been in the basement for so long, oh, their yeah. skin tone matches skim milk. True. They're so pale that they're turning blue. <laughs> you know. The one time they get out of the house a year, they put on their finest Batman costume from, well, back when they actually fit into it. From the Adam West days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and this is their yearly pilgrimage to all things Nerdvana. Yeah. So, you know, again, you, mentally you have that, you know, hang up that doesn't look like Batman. But on the other hand... You know, kudos to this guy because he is rocking a Batman that he should not have been in for the last five years. I don't even know how he got into the Batman suit, to be honest with you. (laughs) Gravity. Uh, (laughs) This thing was... The worst part about this Batman suit, it it was pajama Batman suit. So it wasn't really even a good-looking one. Was it feety pajamas? It it might as well have had feety's pajamas. You could tell (laughs) it was a pajama suit. With a cape put around it. Oh, no. so well, it's, it's no different than the kid that was rocking. It was actually a skinny dude. He had on the um, the all-white costume, of one of the uh, trainers for Pokemon. Yeah. And he had the big initial drawn on the chest of that costume with Sharpie. Because he still stunk of Sharpie. And, and the wig looked like he dragged it behind his car on the way there. Probably did. But... Once he got there, he got everything together. That is what Comic Con's about. It's not about the perfect costume. It's about rocking and representing what it is you like. Oh, I'm still gonna pick on him. Oh, go right ahead. I, I definitely, I'm definitely gonna pick on him because I portray a fat clown, and I do that very well. <laughs> a fat evil clown. He studies uh, all year. Yeah, and uh, very fortunately for myself, no one has tried to portray me. I'd actually like to see that a cosplay of Chuckles' as clown. That'd be pretty interesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. Tony, me, <laughs> me and you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys could do it. The only people that put on their clown paint with the rollers. <laughs> I, and, and it wasn't just that. You're right about the smell that comes off yeah. some of these folks here. There was a gentleman dressed as Pennywise. There was a lot of people dressed as Pennywise at this Comic Con, and because Tim Curry was there. But they were dressing as both Pennywise, which, in a, in a way, the other Pennywise, I think, is like a slap in Tim Curry's face if he even noticed you were slapping him in the face. Sad but true. Uh, but there was this one Pennywise that was going around. He was a little chubby. His wig didn't fit him. <laughs> the paint that was on him definitely looked like, you know, something that was pulled out of a fifth-grade coloring book. <laughs> And he stunk a B.O. so bad that every time he came up to me and tried to interact, I had to graciously bow out. Now, normally, if an evil clown comes over and tries to interact, okay, the bells and whistles are off. I'm going to do it. But this guy stunk so bad that all my senses were saying, I need to retreat. Okay. Now, if you look at the film, 
having not seen the new one, yep. but I did see the previews. And even in the previews, there was one where he was in the sewer. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> that, that was given. But this, was, this was the newer. So he was just going for authenticity. He, he nailed that authenticity <laughs> because even the vendor was trying to get him away from the table. That's how bad this guy was stinking. And then he had the audacity to go over to the food vending area. Uh, where he was stinking, and everybody's sitting there like, oh, man, what the hell's that smell? Now, is it see, the food? <laughs> I might have been near there because I thought they had wieners at one point. <laughs> <laughs> if they had wieners, I would have been all over that. But, no, they did not have wieners. They had some big, fat Pennywise there sitting there stinking up the place like a skunk. Guys, there's stuff out there. It's called soap and water. Uh, use it. I mean, it's not that hard. Uh, it wasn't at this con, but a few cons past, they have the um, sci-fi speed dating. And the guy that was promoting the sci-fi speed dating had B.O. If you're trying to do speed dating, why would you not, like, hit the showers? I, I don't know. I really don't know. And, and the cost involved, what they don't tell you, <laughs> uh, I actually talked to someone who was going to do the speed dating until he found out it was rather cost prohibitive mm-hmm. for him to do it. Uh, I don't know exactly how much it was, but I, I know he had about a three four hundred dollar comic book under his arm. So either he spent his whole wad of money on that one comic book and didn't have much left, or it was a little on the exorbitant yeah. side. Definitely. We come back. We're going to talk about some things that kind of shocked me in the cosplay world, uh, watching and seeing this happening, and we'll talk some more about Comic Con. Let's go down to some more Alice Cooper, and this one's featuring Slash from Guns N' Roses, in case you didn't know. Uh, Vengeance is mine, here on Chuckles Crypt, Rhode Island Free Radio, dot org.
Welcome back to Chuckles Crit. And that was Vengeance is Mine by Alice Cooper. And we're talking all things Comic-Con as I'm sweltering from this really good chili, Ed. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I don't know what I bit into. It's but it better not to know. Yeah, it was not a tomato. I thought it was, but it was a spicy tomato. Yeah, it could be a finger. Who knows? Yeah, well, it was that's a good keep, finger. That's why we keep a fire extinguisher next to the uh, next to the toilet paper. <laughs> well, I know that for a fact that Nurse Misery is going to be having some issues tonight as I am uh, lighting them off <laughs> in the bed sack. So hey, I, I don't need, I don't have to endure any of that. I'm going to have my own little wasteland. Yeah. So we're talking about cosplay, and I've gone over this a couple times, but. I'm going to talk about something that kind of shocked the living hell out of me. There was an abundance of males dressing as females, at female characters at this Comic-Con. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a gentleman dressed as Wonder Woman, even had the dress on, just no shirt. Uh, there was a couple guys there that were dressing up as female anime characters. Uh, and there was a couple dudes dressing up as female, like, Superheroes. Mm -hmm. A little shocked by that. Uh, I've seen the other way around, but not too much of the the male side of it. Uh, maybe it's because I'm old school that it still shocks me. Uh, nothing prejudiced against it, but it still is like, well, this guy's definitely got a set of gajones because he's coming out here dressed like that <laughs> as a woman. Um, he's got more gajones than myself. And these are not people that are drag queens, right? By any no, no, no. these are guys this, dressed. This is Wonder Woman with a five o'clock shadow, <laughs> yeah, and a mustache. Yep. For, yeah, for uh, those of us of a certain age, it looks like Howard Stern on the cover of Private Parts, either the <laughs> book or the movie. So you you saw this guy? Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't the only one. Oh All no, right. I, I saw a bunch of them while I was walking around. Um, I'm good with it. I mean, if that's the yeah. character you want to portray, run with it. Um, I. Personally, the uh, Princess Leia and the slave costume, well, a guy doing that. Was disturbing. <laughs> it, it was disturbing, but he was rocking it. He was owning it. More power to him. Yeah, you never will catch me. Well, I shouldn't say that. I have, Chuckles has sported a dress before, <laughs> and I make a very ugly female. So I've made You're sure not. that not good looking of a male either, so. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. That's one of the reasons I wear so much makeup. It covers the ugliness. <laughs> Uh, but no, that was a little. It was a little shocking to me. I mean, it, it was one of those things I'm not used to. However, I did see a lot of really cool cosplays this year, and one of my favorites was a gentleman dressed up as Cyborg from, in case you guys don't know, from DC, and spot on. I mean, this guy's costume was something that you can tell that he put some love and care into this thing, because uh, it was like one of the best. Uh, and then there was a gentleman dressed as Guy Falk, or V for Vendetta. And that, that outfit was really, really cool. Uh, there was a couple people dressed up as... There was a group of people dressed up as Johnny Depp characters. Mm -hmm. That was really cool. Uh, the Edward Scissorhands lady, yeah. she put a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of time into their costume. Uh, and then there was this gentleman, and I give him credit for this, for staying in character... He dressed up as Mega Man, and he even had the attire shaped like Mega Man, which made it hard for him to walk. Yeah. I mean, talk about commitment. I mean, this guy is like everything down to the point where anatomically, Mega Man should not be able to walk, period, if this is the way he dresses. True. But th this guy did a really great job with that. Um, so, uh, well, welcome, George Garner. Welcome. We had thought maybe that the evils within Halloween had captured you and we weren't going to see you again. Uh, they almost did. I mean, I have. it would take the rest of the time of your show to tell you what I've been through this weekend. Uh, I, I believe before it. Before arriving here to, right at this moment. Well, welcome to Chuckles Crypt. We are talking all things Comic-Con, and I missed you there. I missed Comic-Con. You know why I missed Comic-Con? Work? I, no. I had set aside the entire day of Saturday. Nothing. No work. No plans. No other assigned chores. Assignments. Engagements. No other. Thank you. 
Yeah, I can see this is the political season. <laughs> no other engagements. I had set aside the entire 10 a.m. to closing for Comic-Con. I was on my way to Comic-Con in the morning. Crash. Oh. Break, car broke down. Oh. Yeah. Took me until basically late in the afternoon to get the car roadworthy again. AAA, help people, you know, blah, 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 blah. Right. Apparently, a piece of somebody else's engine had been in the street. Huh, a good, small, good place for it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's about, about, uh, about four inches long, yeah. pointed and jagged at one end. It went into my tire when I made a turn. After I had gone to the bank to get the money for Comic-Con, I was there with $300 in my pocket to spend at Comic-Con. <laughs> and I turned the corner, and this piece of jagged engine... That's what the uh, guy, from, you know, the, the mechanic identified it as. Jammed itself into my tire in such a way that not only did it give me a flat tire, but when I, tr you know, you tried to put the air back in the tire and, you know, drive, you know, until you get to uh, yeah. retire repair later. It wouldn't even take it because the, the piece of metal was so big that it was hitting the inside rim of the car. Damn. Oh, wow. And so I thought that it was, I, I had thrown like... Uh, it happened to me once before for real in one of my other, in my Firebird where not a rot, not a, something to do with the axle. I figure the, the, so the, uh, CV joint? Possibly. You know, it makes that thumping sound as you drive. Yeah, that's it. your CV axle. Thank you. That's the word I've been looking for all this time. <laughs> yeah. So I, I thought, I thought I blew that, right? I thought that was gone. Apparently, the piece of metal stuck in my tire was so big, it was duplicate. It was making the car bounce and duplicating this, duplicating that mechanical breakdown. The brothers in the neighborhood just thought you had hydraulics. They were like, yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only on one-fourth of my car, though. So, yeah, so to make a long story short, uh, yeah, that's what I spent my time doing. It did the same thing happen when we were coming back from a, sh a gig in Salem once, too? Uh, yeah, almost exactly I, the same thing. Almost exactly. Although that time I didn't hit a piece of an engine. That time the road sank out from under <laughs> us. It was, yeah, I, yeah. Thank you, Tony, for bring, <laughs> make, bringing back the uh, the pain PTSD. That is, that is the most evil laugh I have heard from the clown in <laughs> in quite a while. Yes, because I can see the the picture of you and the car sinking into the street. Well, it, it didn't. Is, it didn't. Well, I didn't sink. The, the the uh, it was one of those old concrete road beds, I think in uh, yeah Salt Lake County somewhere in Massachusetts, and it was heavy rain and it undermined the road the underneath the road the dirt underneath the road, so that this slab of concrete sank on one end yeah. into the ground and there was like a, a line of about twenty other cars and the AAA guy was just making circles yeah like a sinkhole right and then, and then when when one part of the road sank, the other half rises up and that's what i crashed into and flattened three tires putting some nice scrapes on the bottom of my car and uh yeah that was the uh charming uh ride home w in the tow truck with lucy <laughs> night all i can picture in my head is that scene from ghostbusters where the street cracks up yes and yep. the police car goes into the hole and that is right not right <clears throat> not, not as deep of a hole but that's exactly the phenomenon that happened maybe it was a ghostbusters thing Maybe Zool was trying to get you. Yeah, possibly, but I've always been a big fan of Zool. Yeah? So, yeah, so I, I think it was more just like Massachusetts sucking. <laughs> I think that's everything for New England roads. They definitely do suck. Uh, let's, let's go down to some music here, and then we'll come back and talk about some of the celebrities that I met at Comic-Con, and there was quite a few. Yeah, make sure you rub it in. I will, with some salt and vinegar. Uh, let's go down to some Alice Cooper all night long, George. You've missed some really good Cooper songs. This is one of my favorites off his, uh, his um, Billion Dollar Babies album. This is Alice Cooper's Sick Things here on Chuckles Crypt, Rhode Island Free Radio .org. Sick Things In cars Rotate Round My stars Things, my things, my pets, my things.
Welcome back to Chuckles Crypt as I'm shoving a corn muffin down my throat. <laughs> Trying not to choke. Yeah, I'm a fatty. <laughs> Listen, we don't have workman's comp here, so don't go down. <laughs> yeah. That was Sick Things by Alice Cooper, one of my favorite songs and off one of my favorite albums, uh, Billion Dollar Babies. Definitely one of his top three albums, not even top ten. Uh, but that's my opinion. No, I think it's most Alice Cooper fans' opinion. It's mine, too. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people will rate that, that CD actually at one because of the amount of hits that came off of that well, that one album. Well, you got me listening to Alice, Alice Cooper recently. You put me in Alice Cooper's state of mind, so I've been listening to Alice Cooper. I have to say, though, I'm going to disagree with you on the Welcome to My Nightmare. I just listened to it in its, in its entirety last week. Yep. I think it edges it by a little bit. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. yeah. Welcome to My Nightmare. It was a good album. Definitely was. Now, let's talk about some of the celebrities that I met at Comic-Con. And it was a handful of them. No douchebags this year. However, you there mean, was... You mean uh, Virgil wasn't there? No, Virgil <laughs> wasn't there. I stayed clear of X-Pac and Scott Hall because I heard that Scott Hall was being a D-bag. And I've had encounters with X-Pac before where... He was a D bag, yeah. so I just stayed clear of the two of them, and my my encounters were great. Uh, the wrestling room was set up separately, except for Ric Flair and DDP, who was in the celebrity area, which I didn't understand why Ric Flair separated himself from the wrestlers because other than the wrestling career, Ric Flair has nothing. <laughs> He's never been in a movie. I think that's more of I'm not going to hang around with those jobbers <laughs> type attitude on Ric Flair's part. <laughs> Jobbers, so that room had freaking Sergeant Slaughter in it. Yeah, like out of all the guys in there, See, I think that means more Hall, <clears throat> Nash, and X Pac. Yeah, well, yeah. those definitely guys are jobbers compared to us. And not know, only Rick were Flair. they jobbers, but if you remember the history in WCW, I'm sure that Hall and at least especially Nash was one of the people that caused Ric Flair to have a really miserable time in WCW. Add in that Ric Flair has been a regular fixture at Rhode Island Comic Con for. Few True years that. now, plus other yeah, other uh, cons around the area, where the rest of them, this is their first, maybe second appearance. And as, let's put it this way: Ric Flair had a really <clears throat> great time at the Thirsty Beaver. Yeah, shout out to the Thirsty Beaver <laughs> uh, in Rhode Island to the point where he was <coughs> sick, sick coming in Saturday. But he wasn't thirsty. <laughs> no, he definitely was not. So I think Ric Flair enjoys himself in Rhode Island in the New England area. Which, which, by the way, and I'll remind you guys between now and then because it's not till next summer, but it's our good friend Hardcore Joe that put together that room. And we do 100% have a table at his wrestling convention coming up at the Crown Plaza. And he's, uh, he's booking up some big names, and I guess he said he has more names on the way that he'll be announcing into the new year. Please okay. tell me Scott Hall and X Pac are not on I there. I did not see them on there yet. yet. Oh. Okay, now well, what's the date for this so my car knows enough to break uh, down? It's on not till next summer, so you got plenty of time to put a, uh, some new tires on there. Yeah, I'll buy a whole new car by then. <laughs> yeah, you got plenty of time for that. No, uh, so let's talk about some of the good ones. Uh, I met Dustin Rose, otherwise AKA Gold Dust. The man was actually afraid of me in gear. The guy that paints himself up in gold and is a freak in the ring mm -hmm. was afraid of the clown. Coldrophobia Cold knows no bounds. It definitely does not. Plus not, that crazy not, character in WCW. No, he said, get away from me, clown. I'm afraid of clowns. But then <laughs> after a while, like I think he started to warm up to me when he found out like uh, I wasn't that bad of an evil clown, mm -hmm. although I am evil. Look, before I go any further, I got called out on this. <clears throat> Being an evil clown because I'm a family man. Someone had the audacity, first of all, y you little effing punk, <laughs> to call me out and say, oh, look at you. You're making balloon animals and playing the family-friendly clown. I have a family. Yeah. Family comes first. So if I'm going to take a picture with Goldust, which I did, and my family wants to be part of it, which they did, there's no problem in this. Oh, so the, now, what is, now, who was the little punk that... It's over? another fellow evil clown oh, that called right. me out on on my Chuckles and Laughs show Sounds page. a little jealous. He was, basically, he was accusing you of breaking kayfabe. Yeah, uh, you, you know, which... Who is he to talk? I mean, as far as I know, I'm still the evil clown that has his own radio station, that has his own television show, and has been on 
Monster Channel, and this this clown, <laughs> no one knows, no one cares to know. So I think there's a little bit of jealousy rocking inside. Yeah, of plus jealousy, ahead. and you're unfortunately you have to having public eye, you have to pander to, mm-hmm. you know what the, the situation you're in. Yeah, you know, if you're a relatively unknown or a totally unknown individual, you could do whatever the hell you want because it doesn't have repercussions. You know, with every action is an equal and opposite reaction. Right. If you start really flaring up and and start swinging at the fences, you're going to lose your radio show, your TV show. You're going to lose your your spot at Comic Con. Uh, not here. We'll give them a second hour. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just because I'm a family man does not change the fact that I'm an evil bastard. All right, there's plenty of clowns out there, uh, like my good friend Seth Carney, who's an evil clown, who is also a family man, but he's still an evil bastard. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've worked with, well, we've all worked with Seth. Yeah. Uh, Seth has his moments to be evil, and he also has a heart of gold. I wouldn't say I have a heart of gold, but I'll say I have a heart of coal. Uh, to that you, you, point, you do you do stuff for charities, yeah, right? I will, I'll, I will inter- I'll put I'll interrupt here, and I will play a little bit of devil's advocate, though. And I'm not in no way sticking up for a loser punk, okay? <laughs> but you yourself have often said that, for example, when you come to the show here, if we're going to have somebody that you're less familiar with, or you know, you want to always want to be in character, or if we're going right. to be rolling film, you you never want to be seen as out of character. When the right when like Tony said when there's filming to in other words whenever there's any public perception of you right you never want to be out of character so I can see so leaving the little uh, wanna be clown aside I I would I would say maybe say a little friendly something to you like if I had been there with Goldust saying Chuck you know in other words you might want to do some promotional material or you know with Goldust in character. <laughs> Just the two of you. And then, you know what I'm saying? Like, then after the con or at some, you know, other time, then get the family in there and for a candid. You know what I'm saying? Like, you did break character. No, I didn't break character because my family has always been a part of my show. Nurse Misery has always been there as my wife. Was Nurse Misery in character? Yes. Oh, then. my kid is going to be part of my show. Rather, she likes it. Oh, all right. See, I was so yeah. there was no character breaking inside there. And no, no, I, no, there wasn't. See, from what from what was said, I was under the impression that you just said, "Yeah, okay," and you know, Nurse Misery was out of character. No, nobody was and out of character. Then, no. then murder the little wannabe yeah, clown. So, <laughs> I was just saying, when someone has the audacity to call me out and doesn't know me, uh, but the that's old. A, that's absurd. I mean, you were there with your cast. Can I just say this to that person? You don't know me. Blow me. <laughs> I don't care. I am an evil clown. I will always be an evil clown. Yes, I do stuff for charity, <laughs> but I have my own reasons for doing that. You, maybe they're selfish. Lulling them into a false sense of security. Yeah, well, you, maybe. You don't know me. Blow me. Do you have that copyrighted? Because I'm seeing some merchandise yeah. right away. Maybe I think we, we should, should get that, that printed up. Freaking Chuckles the Clown t-shirts. You don't know me. Blow me. That would be definitely <laughs> good. Uh, but after we eating Goldust, which the guy was great, uh, I had the, audace- or the, the opportunity to meet Cassandra Peterson again, a.k.a. Elvira. Yes, in this room, you do not have to. She, <laughs> let's put this. She is a sweetheart. Talking about people that break character. Uh-huh. Uh, she wasn't herself. Uh, she wasn't in. Right. She wasn't in character. Right. right. She's a sweetheart, and she's still phenomenally good looking. Yeah. To the point where I still would date her, uh, if she allowed me to. Okay, I don't want to ask. Maybe I do want to ask this, and I don't. How old is she now? I don't know. Does I, it matter? I will not ask her. Uh, she's no, that's, still, that's why I said I don't know if I want. I didn't want to know if I wanted to know anyway. So yeah, she's still very attractive, um, and uh, like I said, she's really fan friendly. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we gave her a a booklet and a a bag full of our stuff, and she was wow. actually <clears throat> gratified and had gratitude towards us to the point where she was saying thank you, not just oh this is great, whatever, put it in the corner. Right. She actually showed interest, so. Elvira might be at home watching the Chuckles and Laughs show, sitting back saying, wow, maybe I should have done this. Chuckles, this threw me for a loop. Elvira slash Cassandra Peterson is 67 years old. 
No. I thought she was maybe in her late 40s, early 50s. Yep, really? She was born in 1951. Well, As a matter of fact, she dated Elvis Presley. She is almost 70. That's all right. She's still very good looking at the age that she's at. Well, I believe you. Yeah. Uh, the last person that I met that was a stellar person as well, um, well, not the last person, I'll talk about the last one in a second, was Sergeant Slaughter. I mean, this guy was one of the coolest people that I've met in the wrestling world. I didn't even buy anything from him. Didn't buy an autograph, didn't buy a picture, just sat there and bullshitted with him mm -hmm. about the wrestling world and about his... I'm a huge G.I. Joe fan, so the fact that Sergeant Slaughter was a character in G.I. Joe, I was actually <laughs> able to talk to him about that. I think he was a little... Like, wow, this guy's actually talking about toys and cartoons right, not with me. something in the WWF. Yeah, not right. something in WWF. And I, I think he was a little taken off by that. But he was still uh, an outstanding guy uh, to, to meet, nevertheless. Well, probably one of the reasons is that he might not. He might be one of the few uh, former wrestling personalities there that doesn't need the money as much. I don't think he does. Right. Because, right? I mean, he made his money, with, like you said, with Hasbro. And uh, yeah, and then he, he did, worked behind the scenes for years. He yeah. did like flaunting his Legends ring. That He did like flaunting a couple <laughs> times. To, and he, he, to my daughter, he's like, you want to high-five my Legends ring? I'm like, <laughs> oh, someone's a little proud of their Legends ring, which I would be proud of that if I was in WWF having a Legends ring. That would be great. Now, the Legends ring, now, remind me. That the, the given, Hall of Fame. The Hall, in other words, being in the WWE Hall of Fame. Yeah, you get, get to the, the Legends ring. ring. Yep. Oh, that's the okay. The Hall of Fame ring. Yeah. So that that was great. The last person I met was DDP, Diamond Dallas Page. And if you guys have never got the chance to meet this guy, he is a hoot. Uh, if he is one of those guys that has done other things besides wrestling, uh, he's been in the Devil's Rejects. He's one of the bounty hunters there, and he signed. Uh, my paper with words that I cannot say over the airways, <laughs> uh, but he signed it. And he also runs this really cool yoga program, which Chuckles the Clown is going to be getting himself into so that I can get myself uh, more into the chasing activity because oh. I'm fat and lazy. So I need to get myself to being able to uh, chase fast food, so to speak. Okay, so I was going to say that it's, Usually you don't have to worry about things like that because you're into the uh, freezer scene. I mean, I am you know, into you, the freezer scene. Your women don't move. Scaring people now has become a chore, like to oh, the point oh, where okay, chasing in the haunts. And yeah, things. yeah. Uh, like, uh, can, which yeah, this is going to be a shocker to people out there. This uh, if you did not come and see me at Scary Acres this year, you're out because Chuckles the Clown has officially retired from the haunted house business. What? Uh, this was the last year. Uh, this was number twenty for myself. Uh, is this is this news to everybody in the room? It is. It is to me. Yeah. And I heard Tony's exclamation of disbelief. Now, is this going to be like the the item we covered a few weeks ago? Ozzy's nope. no more tours. Nope. Tours. <laughs> I I have a lot of stuff that in October I cannot do uh, due to the haunt world, and a lot of it is monetary. And these are big monetary events that I am. Because I obligate myself to Scary Acres, I can't do these. And Scary Acres is great, but the money doesn't pay the bills. So some of these other events that they're, they're willing to offer me a little more money to show up to, I'm blowing off. And also a little more prominence. Not yeah. that Scary Acres isn't prominent, but... And I don't have to deal with little kids saying, what is that, a Santa Claus hat <laughs> on my head? Or uh, you look like my dad. Or one of the things I really hated this year was the kids doing the stupid dance from, from the It movie there. That was getting kind of ridiculous. Okay, I don't blame you. I'll, let's so, just, no. I'll, let's, yeah, okay. As of that second, this moment, that, that statement, I don't yeah. blame you. I haven't worked the, the haunt uh, circuit in a number of years, but I hear that kids are just getting ruder and ruder. And not just kids, but people in their late teens, early 20s. Everybody. Big, big kids. Everybody. I, I've, I talked about this last time. It seems like people are paying $20 to come down and be assholes <laughs> and then get thrown out of the place. So uh, I don't know what's going on. I mean, I you don't pay sixty dollars to go to Six Flags, yeah, and you act like a jerk and get yourself thrown out of there. Uh, there's no difference. This is still considered a uh, attraction, right. and it's got all this other stuff inside there. But I, I don't get it. Um, we come back. We'll talk about some things that got people thrown out of Comic Con. <laughs> 
this year, and I got to witness one of them, and it was pretty entertaining. Uh, let's go down to some music here. This is Alice Cooper's Disco Bloody Bath Boogie Fever here in Chuckles Crip, Rhode Island Free Radio. Dot org. <laughs> About you. Your hands in the air, stick them up like you don't care. Face the wall, count to ten. We mow you down, reload again. That was Alice Cooper's Disco Bloody Bath Boogie Fever. And we are getting ready to wrap things up. Coming up next, My Night Out Radio. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. Uh, when next we get into the radio station, Mr. Goner, yes. we will be talking about the seven deadly sins of comic books. This is characters that either villains or superheroes emulate one of the seven deadly sins. Ah, I'm there. Yeah. But I'm look, that's a good so, topic. I, I give you credit. I mean, and I mean this as a compliment, obviously, not as an insult. I don't know how you come up with this stuff. I mean, I would have never thought of that in a million years. But now that he said it, I, yeah, it clicks. Yeah, so yeah. we'll be going over some of the characters that emulate this, and it will be close to Thanksgiving. So this will be Chuckles' Thanksgiving terror episode. Does that mean we're going to uh, engage in the... Deadly sin of gluttony. We will be uh, with uh, some more great food from Psycho Eddie. Uh, I'm sure we'll be indulging in the great thing of gluttony. Yeah, uh, food services will be around uh, next week. That will be great. <coughs> so, all things uh, set aside, thank you for listening. And boils and ghouls, stay tuned. My Night Out Radio, next.
Adapter Adapter. The name of that one was Evil Woman. Well, I just noticed myself coming in through the monitors. We're all set there? Alrighty. Okay. By the way, if you're just tuning in, good thing, because we just started. This is My Night Out Radio, only on rifreeradio.org. This is DJ Seiko Eddie. To my right, I have Mr. George Garner. Good we man. have Chuckles the Clown. Hi and bye. <laughs> he, he's just cruising through. And, of course, on the soundboard, we have Mr. Tony Jones. With a belly full of chili. Oh, yeah, food services hooked us up very well. Chili, cornbread. Now, we got a lot of things to talk about. Not too much time to cover, so I'm going to be talking double speed pretty much all night. <laughs> uh, first off, we're going to start off with all things Comic-Con. We're going to be talking quite a bit about that. We are going to talk about a few uh, few things that happened during the Uber drive uh, last week, Uh-oh. which was Halloween. Oh, jeez. Uh, oh, Halloween night. That, that must have drunk. been a show. I, I stayed down in the North Kingston, South Kingston area. Oh, geez, that must have been a show. <laughs> all around. I know the freaks that live down there. <laughs> all around University of Rhode Island, oh, which is one of the biggest party schools in the country. What smells like skunk. <laughs> oh. Well, I got to say, for just starting off, uh, there, I had a lot of places to eat. Of course, I have two weeks worth of eating to talk about, so I'm going to cover that really quickly right now. First place is going to be Masala. M-A-S-A-L-A. Uh, it's an Indian Pakistani food. Uh, 35 Quaker Lane in West and Wo- Yeah, West Warwick. Um, where is that? Uh, for Rhode Island terms, where is that near? Because the uh, old I love that kind of uh, The old DeShantis ice cream. It's, oh, okay. It, wow. Actually, near they the are. courthouse-ish? Yeah, they okay. are in where the Miss Cranston Diner yep. 2 used to be. In fact, I think it's the same waitress. Now, the food there is absolutely amazing. If you're like... Anything Indian, you will find it there, and it is excellent. And Price is moderate. Uh, 12 to $13 is like kind of on the high end for them. They do have a buffet. Right, um, which, I, which I specifically like with Indian food because I don't eat a ton of Indian food, so if I could try something at the buffet and kind of add to my palate of now I know next time, okay, I like this, I don't like this. Well, I, I've, I've gone right through you know, pretty much – Anything you could imagine through Indian, I've I've tried it at least once. Vindaloo, sag, you know all the different meats and whatever. The thing that really caught me was for dessert, they have this stuff called halwa, H A L A W A, something like that. Uh, I, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong and spelling it even worse. <laughs> but we asked what it was because it tasted like pumpkin. No, it's got a spice to it. It's cream of wheat. <laughs> you made cream of wheat. Not only orange, number one, but it tasted so good, I actually went out of my way to talk to the cook or yeah. the chef, and he's like, yeah, it's just cream of, cream of wheat. Blew my mind. That was the first place. Number two is the Golden Greek, 474 Putnam Pike in Dayville, Connecticut. Uh, too far for me. Uh, I, well, some of us actually can migrate more than 30 uh, minutes away from our I house. I can only get between here and my house. <laughs> and I live close by. I haven't been there yet. So what's the report? The Golden Greek, very good. Uh, I got the prime rib. I went there on a Saturday afternoon with, uh, with the missus. I got the Golden Greek cut prime rib. Um <laughs> It was only about twenty three, twenty four dollars. It wasn't too bad. Okay. Now, this similar size piece of prime rib at a local Rhode Island establishment like Twin Oaks, okay. you're going to pay about thirty, thirty five bucks. Right. Okay. Now, mashed potatoes it comes with a salad bar, soup, and everything else. You you don't really have to worry about too much extra. The drinks are very good. Uh, I did have a cocktail while I was there. Uh, the drinks are poured nicely. They're actually a proper pour. Um, can't say enough of good things about it. And then again, I had prime rib. My wife had salmon, and we left there under $50. Wow. How about, the, appeti- how about the appetizers? Like any I, I didn't appetizers? look at I, I actually Just stuck went with the right for the- I, I went right for the, the salad bar because, you know, I'm trying to eat a little bit healthier. Okay. And, and that, you wrapped and- your prime rib in lettuce? <laughs> No, yeah, you have to have a few leaves of lettuce before you get the uh, about 18, 20 ounce piece of prime rib. That's good to know, though, because my uh, favorite prime rib place in North Kingstown, Jillian's Ale House, just uh, went belly up. So exactly, yeah. So Golden Greek, if you want to make the pilgrimage, is well worth it. 
Um, of, of course, Twin Oaks, if you if you really have to have that prime yeah. rib. Um, another place I only hit, now this is, fast forward to this past weekend, during Comic-Con, I had managed to dip out uh, Saturday afternoon for about, about an hour or so. I, I went two blocks away from the uh, the convention. It's a place called Viva Mexico. It's turning into my Comic-Con Go to spot. Okay, everybody should have a convention go to spot. Right, exactly. You, you know, some place clo- some place close by. Good drinks, good food. Mine's Tom's Bow Bow, by the way, which is a, a few streets over, but well worth the walk. A- actually, you went twice the distance. Okay, I- I'm halfway in between. Tom's Bow Bow, I've been to, really good, but we're not talking about that one right now. Uh, we're talking about, um, yeah, brain fart. Viva Mexico. Now, when I get got there, I um. I had been a little stressed, you know. It's been you know Comic Con weekend. You're nonstop on your feet. Right. You're pushing through. So I, I lost a- my voice a little bit from uh, well, for lack of a better term, bullshitting all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had uh, needed a cocktail to quench my thirst, <laughs> so I had ordered a, uh, a, a martini with a twist of uh, orange. Very good. Uh, you really can't screw up a glass of vodka. It's possible, but very difficult. Yeah, yeah, you know, vodka with a twist. That's all it is. And for those of you, I, I hope I'm not letting any cats out of the bag. You know, the only reason why they call it a martini is call, calling it a glass of vodka makes you look gauche. However, I've had some bad martinis though. Like they're, they're all salty and stuff. Well, those are the uh, the the dirty martinis, which are my favorite. But they don't have olives it's at like, Viva yeah. Mexico, which blew my mind. <laughs> So and they were very honest with it. We don't have olives. We don't have olive juice. We'll make you, you know, fine. That's fine. So after that first martini went down, it hit nicely. That's when bad decisions yeah. kind of kicked in. I, um, well, I ordered my food. I got a uh, goat burrito. Sorry, they call it barracoa. Um, it was only like a $7, $6 burrito, so it wasn't that expensive. However, the six shots of Patron and the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, probably about the same amount of beer, when Modelo Especial, uh, washed it down really nicely. And the rest of the hooves, day... Hooves and all? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, the hooves. The um, Actually, they, they just garnished the plate with the hooves. Okay, that's, I, that's, I'm only kidding. There's no hooves involved. No, I'm, I'm only kidding. Those too, were but, the hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do mention that because um, I know if you order goat in an Indian restaurant... Yep. Um you know, I have a friend that you know really likes goat, but he complains that it's usually sort of it's it's all bones, all bones. Oh. Yeah. yeah, you have to pick through the bones unless you 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 know the chef or you you schmooze someone, and then you can get less bones. But still, goat is very bony to begin with. No way around it. Yeah. So, anyways, a bunch of tequila, a very large uh, mag- um, martini, several beers, and a burrito. Later, I head back to uh, uh, Comic Con where I. Uh, Basically had a really good day the rest of the day. <laughs> um, so those are the three food places I, I hit that I got to tell you about. Uh, of course, is Beer on Earth. They have a, uh, a beer there called Smoke and Mirrors. Out of this world. It actually has a very smoky flavor to it. Uh, I try to get to Beer on Earth at least once a week. So you're going to hear me talk about it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, they have really good bread there because it's also a bakery during the okay. day. So those are the uh, the places I can recommend for the past two weeks. Now, keep in mind, we missed last week, and I am, uh, well, reusing the, the Halloween playlist I had for last week. <laughs> but, you know, it happens. We just move on from there. Um, we're going to hit some more music, and, and it's going to be kind of a dead giveaway uh, the, on the second song, who we're going to be talking about next. But we're going to leave here with the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Nice. Uh, the uh, off their soundtrack. The name of the song is "The Time Warp." We'll be back in a bit. It's astounding. Time is fleeting. Madness takes its toll. But listen closely. Not for very much longer. I've got to. Just a 
jump to the left. Like you're under sedation 
<laughs> All right, everybody. That was Meatloaf. The name of that one was Saturday Night. Also off the Rocky Horror Picture Show soundtrack. Before that was The Time Warp. Well, we're going to change gears really quickly here. We're going to switch over to Weird Crap That Happened to Me Halloween Weekend or, or previous weekend to Halloween. Um, driving Uber. Now, I purposely went down South County, uh South Kingston, Southern Rhode Island, because I knew, well, as an Uber driver, you have longer trips, right. but all the college, all the college kids that go to URI are in the beach houses and whatever that they rent out during the summer. Well, that's where all the kids stay off campus. Now, I, I don't know why the trend has happened, but I'm very appreciative that it has happened, but it seems that every female Halloween costume is getting smaller and smaller. Skimpier and skimpier. I mean, there was one girl who got out of the truck. Uh, uh, now, I drive a Suburban when I drive okay. Uber, so I can get larger groups. Right. And girls are getting out of the third row, and yeah, there there was nothing left to the imagination. I mean, if, if my camera was pointed in a different direction, I could have triple X video. It, it was just and unbelievable. Just could you identify the... Uh, costumes or the characters being portrayed oh not a chance in hell (laughs) all all i saw was cleavage and a lot of makeup and and very little cloth in between kind of like rocky horror pictures yeah pretty much (laughs) but the highlight to the entire evening and and it was funny up until it wasn't then it was really sad then it got vindictive and then it got funny again okay take us (sighs) okay now, I pull up. This is about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. Get called to some side road, which is actually a dead-end street, and I'm in a parking lot across the street from the house I got to pick up from. It's right at the end of the street, so uh, no, don't have to worry about traffic or anything. Well, the door of the house opens up, and here comes this girl, very well endowed, in a very skimpy black dress with uh, very thin spaghetti straps okay. that had no chance in hell of containing what she had bouncing around. Just okay. basic physics won't allow it. <laughs> By the time she got to me, what was down almost down to her knees was now somewhere above her navel. <laughs> um, the spaghetti straps, well, they decided to merge together and everything went around the outside <laughs> of the dress. Ah, and some, she, some of the best effect. She, <laughs> now, mind you, I do have a video camera facing forward. So I caught all of this on video. No, I will not show you the video. I wasn't about to ask. Okay, I'll, show, some, I'll show it to you later. <laughs> Anyways, she comes bolting across the front yard, and, and I'm watching this saying, this has got to be my ride. Sure, then she gets to the truck, gets in, and as soon as I, I, I turn, she's fixing herself. I said, you know, I, I kind of blocked it. I said, I turned a little bit. I turned back, said, look, I don't want to look. You know, get when you get your composure, but is your name, you know, did so-and-so call it? Yes. Okay. I turn out of the drive. I'm about halfway down the street. I said, are you going to X and such an address? Big silence, just like that. Then she screams, that F and A hole. I'm guessing he put in the wrong address. <laughs> Turns out his other girlfriend... <laughs> Lives at, that lives at that address who she just found out about damn i just picked her up her. right after the breakup with the boyfriend with the boyfriend who she was just leaving the house she was leaving his house because she just found out and i guess she found out about this other girl and he gave you that other girl's address to drop uh, her off exactly <laughs> Maybe he was trying to get a menage a trois going. Maybe you know, he was trying to get a cat fight. You got to you got to admit, I, I admire the candor for him trying to to get the three way going. However, you know, I I, just, I felt very bad for this girl. She actually was sobbing. So I, I have tissues, whatever. I hand them back to her. I say, you know, you whatever. If if where do you live? I will get you home no matter. Where. He's paying for you to go there anyways because it's his name. Okay. He's paying for you to get there. Yeah, I will you can take, take you it to another state. I will take you yeah. wherever you want to go. Yeah, just, time. just give me directions because I can't change the address. I get it to her house, and by the time we get there, she's giggling. Now, I, I, I again, I'm not looking back in case she didn't fix everything. Right. I got a video for that, anyways. <laughs> but um, 
I said, you know, you were sobbing a few minutes ago. Now you're giggling. She goes, well, now I have his new girlfriend's number. Turns out she has a friend who was a roommate of hers the previous year who is a friend of hers, lives at that same address. Uh-huh. Knows it's not the, her friend, but it's her, ro- her friend's roommate. And um, she's texting back and forth to basically get the living crap kicked out of this girl. <laughs> That's where the evilness started welling up. And I said, well, do you want to go there instead? She goes, no. <laughs> I'm just going to go in. I'm going to have a few cocktails. I'm going to bed. It's been a rough night. And on the way out, she says, by the way, now, hopefully she was joking. I said, she says, by the way, if you hear of any murders in Narragansett, You didn't see me. Again, I had to laugh a little bit. It was a little, it's weird to catch me on an uncomfortable laugh. Right. And and she did it and she put me dead center in the, yeah, okay, sure, no problem. (laughs) And and just freaked me out after that. Yeah, well, I don't, well, I don't think if a murder is heard about in Narragansett, I don't think she would be the one that would be holding the murder weapon. Yeah. It sounds like she's uh, setting the, you know, she just doesn't want to be an accessory or a. Um, well, I dropped her off at her house, which was nowhere near the other address. Right, that's what I'm saying. So. That's the last I saw of her, so I cannot be a material witness. <laughs> By the way, everything you hear here tonight is for entertainment, entertainment purposes, purposes only. only. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, that's, I'm going to cut my. my uh, my Uber story's short there because I do want to talk about Comic-Con. I'm running out of time quickly. Uh, first off, if you want to get in touch with me, my night out radio at Verizon.net. If you want to advertise, if you want to promote anything, if you want to get on the show and talk to us, definitely hit me up, my night out radio at Verizon.net. Also, look me up, Facebook forward slash my night out. Check out the website, my night out, ri.com for all your upcoming events. Twitter and Instagram, look me up at DJ Psycho Eddie. And like I told you, I am talking double speed tonight. We're going to leave here with a little bit of ministry. The name of this one is Bad Blood. We'll be back in a bit.
right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Ministry. The name of that one was Bad Blood. Now, we are going to change gears rapidly. Once again, we are going to be talking about all things Comic-Con. So that it once more can be rubbed in on me who missed it. You see, I, I wasn't even going to broach the subject, but I do feel bad for Mr. George Garner here. He, uh, he had... He had he was on his way to Comic Con Saturday. He dedicated an entire day. He even went so far as to stopping at the ATM machine to withdraw ample funds to make whatever purchases and food and beverage and what have you. And on his way after leaving the ATM, basically got a piece of someone else's engine <laughs> stuck into his tire and kind of laid him up for the rest well, of the weekend. Well, really, basically, yes, yeah, it didn't get yeah. fixed till Monday morning. So, now I, I I feel bad for you, George, but not that much because I was there and I had a hell of a time. Well, as, as my mother used to say, uh, I feel for you, but I can't reach you. <laughs> <laughs> well, first off and foremost, I got to say kudos to Steve and, and all his team because this time this year he got what I think is the perfect floor layout. Yeah. He had two isolated areas for the celebrities. One in the Dunkin' Donuts Center for the yeah. ones that really needed the long cues, On like Kiefer, yeah, yeah. Kiefer Sutherland, uh, Tim Curry, you know, the bigger names. The, guy, the, the kids from uh, Stranger Things were right. down there. And then uh, fifth floor at the convention center in the main ballroom where it, it, it opens up the whole center of the convention right. center. That was pretty much the cattle call for every Everybody other else. celebrity. Right. The wrestlers were in their own room. Um, they had different areas around, but when you got to the uh, outer area, outer circumference of the Dunkin' Donuts Center, the lower half of you know the the outer half on the uh, the ground floor, right. and the convention floor itself, you know halls A through D, right. Every usable inch was used yeah. and used well. They narrowed the aisles down a little, but they didn't have the roadblocks because you didn't have queues forming for all the celebrities. The the vendors were mixed very well. They had the artists in the center of all the vendors. Hmm. So as you're going up and down the aisles, if you have any semblance of normalcy at all and you go up and down the aisles one at a time, you know, you you would go vendor, vendor, vendor aisle, then you progress into a uh, artist, artist, and then vendor, vendor, vendor. Yeah, because I remember last year, if you wanted to stop at a vendor, you know, once things really yeah. got rolling in the afternoon, you were oh yeah, you were looking over, for your yeah. place. You like were a taking monster. your life yeah, in your you're, own like, hands. you're looking over your shoulder to see if you could merge into the <laughs> lane that was going slower by the uh, right. by the tables. Yeah. No, I mean I had plenty of time, you know, plenty of room. <laughs> now I'm a big guy. I'm not going to lie. And I had at uh, some point on Sunday, I had claimed a Viking helmet. <laughs> Along with my large stein of, well, it was soda. It was root beer, but you know, it was it soda. Was beer. It was root. <laughs> last, last year, if you wanted to buy anything, it was like being on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. You had to have your money up and like throw it to the vendor. <laughs> I'll take one of those. He throws it back to you. <laughs> so, no, they, they, they definitely they hit it right. Um, very few, if any, complaints heard about traffic jams. And mm-hmm. e- even going on the Sky Bridge, they opened the Sky Bridge both going ways. both ways. Which was awesome because yeah, you was didn't a have to go outside. Problem last time. Well, they was especially with Saturday because it was raining, especially the earlier part of the day. Right. So going back and forth would have been hell going through the rain. So I, I, I got to say again, I will say it. I will preach to it. They had the perfect layout. Right, and, that, and that's going forward. Yeah, I mean, I, hopefully going forward. That's what I'm saying. They, and they, then they, yeah. they even had the uh, panel rooms over in the Omni. So better, once better and better, yeah, yeah. They, they're taking up two floors of uh, rooms over in the Omni for oh, the two different panel rooms. Right, one was huge, one was you know not as big. Um, I got to meet up with a bunch of celebrities, really cool people to hang out with. You know, just talk, even if for like two three minutes. When you talk to these people, they actually make eye contact. They actually want to be there and they actually wanted to talk to you. Granted, there are some celebrities that after you're done talking to them, you're like, "Wow, that that, that guy's got an issue." <laughs> but it, it's you know, it's probably not diagnosed, and he was nice enough to you. He just right, he was he kept himself under he kept the issues under control yeah. long enough to yeah. now. 
one of the panels I went was uh, Richard Dean Anderson and um, oh, I'm drawing a blank. Um, he played Murdoch in uh, MacGyver. Okay. Michael uh, Michael DeBlaze, something like that. I don't. I, I can't think of it. It'll it'll hit me till I, on my way home from here. But anyways, it was Richard Dean Anderson and one of the other actors from MacGyver. MacGyver. Uh, I went there for Richard Dean Anderson because I always thought he was cool in SG One, and I actually used to watch MacGyver when I was younger. And he basically was talking at one point. Uh, his fellow uh, the fellow actor came out, and while the other actor was talking, Richard Dean Anderson came off the stage over to a girl who had a dog, a, a service dog, and was playing with the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked cool guy, really down to earth. He's from uh, Minnesota, actually. Really, you know, again, very well spoken, very, very, very just down to earth. And, and just talking to him and just listening to him talk, he's one of those people that you can actually calm down by listening to their voice. Yeah, okay. Um, that that was a great panel. And I wish I remembered his name, but I can't think of his name. You will. Yeah, like I said, tonight at like 3 o'clock in the morning, I'll remember it. The other panel, which was the Rocky Hara panel, it was uh, Brian Bostwick, who is on, on his own funny. Meatloaf, who, you know, singer, actor. Right. He, he really, the way he describes himself when he's singing, it's an act. He is acting as a singer. And then when he gets into more detail about his singing, he's talking about cues where different personalities would be singing these songs. And I, I talked to you about this uh, off the air too. Right. Um, it it kind of catches you because he's saying it very matter-of-factly. Like, yep, yeah, when I, I rub my fingers this way or I touch it over here, it gives me a cue to bring up another person. Not a personality. Another person, person is singing that song. So the person who sung uh, Saturday Night on the Rocky Horror theme, uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show theme soundtrack, is not the same person who sings Paradise by the Dashboard Lights. It's right. a completely different person. Yeah, I've been thinking about that since you mentioned to me you mentioned it earlier. To me yeah, earlier. That's actually. What he does is not actually so different from what most performers or entertainers do. Right. It's just that he's more uh, clicking the switch about it. In other words, because we all have different aspects of our persona. Yeah. That we that comes to the fore when we do different things. Like uh, when you mentioned the professional wrestlers, um, their ring personas are built on an aspect of their character. Yeah. Um, you know, when any of the actors or celebrities or writers or artists. When they're speaking to the fans, that's one aspect of their character. When they're working, that's another aspect of their character. So I think pretty much most creative people do the same thing as Meatloaf. It's just that Meatloaf has... He vocalized he it. He vocalized it really well. Yep. And I, I think Stephen King has talked about... Because Stephen King, for most of his life, has he's had <clears throat> been in this quandary about the creative essence the creative the source of his creativity yeah like this is it's a reoccurring theme with him he should listen to meatloaf because like, <laughs> they're not like too said, far different from each other right except but, stephen and, king got into such a quandary about it that he decided just to not do it at all and let his kids do it <laughs> yeah, eventually yeah after he made about a hundred million dollars writing books with the theme of not being able to figure out your creative uh, essence <laughs> And well, then I, I also, one of the other panels I did, which led me into something else that I did, but I um, I went to a panel about podcasting. Okay. Not that I haven't already been doing it for three years, but well, I wanted to see. Learn more. Which, exactly. Which, which, by learn the way, more. as I had mentioned to Ed when he mentioned at the time, I was thinking about pitching our own panel about podcasting and never got around I, I, to, to I really it think up. we should because the guys that did it were very good, very concise, but they were doing it for entry level. Mm -hmm. You know, we actually have the experience behind it, and maybe we yeah. can we could do a uh, like a what's next. You, you know, know? You know yeah. like they're not podcasting one on one. This is podca podcasting for those who are not dummies, right? Or whatever you want to call it. But one of the guys is uh, from the Angry Geek Show. Um, I, I'm 
horrible with names. You you know this by now. Uh, one of the guys from Angry Geek Show and another guy who runs his own podcast. But they were talking about how we used to do it, where we would record ahead of time. Right. Then Tony would edit the hell out of it, make us sound like we knew what we were talking about, right. instead of do what we're doing now, which is the hard 60, where you press play, you walk away, and when we're done, you stop it, and that's what you have. Right, and then you format it. Yeah, you know, you know live to tape there, right. you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. And we were talking about different ways, you know, make sure you network, talk to other podcasters, work with other podcasters, because you never know, he might get you your, your foot in the door or you'll get your foot in the door because he recommended you. Or, you, you know, one hand washes the other and, you know, hey, I'm in a bind. My, yeah, all my mics not, are dead. Yeah, that's not the best new, That's not the best advice, though. Like well, I'm, 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 in, in a perfect world, yeah. It is, but, but in real life, no. Because most creative, most entertainers, most performers, and which we are included under the heading of the big umbrella, yep. are egotistical, arrogant, self-centered and um, mostly <clears throat> do not play well with others. I think the crew that we have here at Rhode Island Free Radio is an exception, That's which is why I like being here. Oh, okay. I, most of the, you know, most of the creative or, uh, prof- well, I think, you know, Tony, can we can all speak to this from bands we've been in, from other well, projects you, we've been in. You're talking about musicians, not podcasters. Granted, it, it is in the it's, same It's in the same, same like, genre. It's in the same ballpark. But, they were telling you, telling us to network, to get out there, um, and, and he even brought up a point where, like, some of his equipment died. He got on uh, one of his social medias, and he said, uh, "I'm in a jam. I need this, this, and this." And people came through for him, and vice versa. He's helped other people. Right. Um, a lot of good advice came from it. Uh, a lot of it I already do. Uh, one of the big ones, which I, I noticed, some people do occasionally but not all that often is never badmouth people or don't bite the hand that feeds you unless you know, it, well unless it's in character well I mean, if it's in character and you're in your busting chops that's one thing right. or unless but, it's something that's so egregious that you have to get it out there well, well in for, information is one thing but when you especially when you're doing an opinion and, and i agree with this because this is something I, i've told everyone i've been to restaurants that really sucked <laughs> I just don't talk about them right. Right. unless it's a health hazard. You know, if I ate at a Chinese restaurant that I got so sick right. before I even paid the bill, right. <laughs> that you know, that's a that's a health yeah. warning. You're doing a serve a social you, service. You needed at that a seeing point. eye dog to get to your car, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, the, the other aspect of that is um, usually when we say something's bad, whether it's uh, you know whether it's something we're reviewing, hmm. whether I mean when it's something we're reviewing, whether it's a restaurant, a CD, a book, whatever it is, usually there's something good to be said about it yeah Mm. i mean unless it absolutely like you said there's good in everything you just gotta have you know does it outweigh the part that sucks unless you're throwing up at the restaurant yeah right i mean (laughs) i I literally was at one point right (laughs) unless it's at that level and and that does happen there is such a thing as just plain god variety sucks yeah yeah. but most things there's good and bad like uh, i've done a couple of book reviews recently for the blog and yeah, I mean, there's things you don't like, but there's things you can recommend. Yeah, you, you, you don't have to bad mouth the author or the performer. Well, they, they were doing it to the point. Of course, they were doing it. Angry geeks and, and the other podcasts were all nerd centric, geek centric, whatever you want to call it, comic books and 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 what have you. And they were saying that if you're at case in point, we were at Comic Con. Don't go off on a tangent saying, well, this sucked about that, that sucked about that, when, you know, you have a bunch of good things you can talk about. Right. Because they are eventually going to hear that, and you will eventually not be invited back. <laughs> right. So right. these are the people that, you know, your 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 livelihood, your content is coming from this That's very convention. True. Don't badmouth them. Right, and you, know. and you can say, okay, we're not bad mouthing the uh, folks that threw the convention, but if you are bad mouthing the talent, if you're bad mouthing the in turn, in, that's the your, vendors, right? Right. Who who will selected the vendors? Who selected the talent? Exactly. So right, in it gets yeah, good point, very good point. Yeah, and, and I I've always been that way. I, I don't like bringing the negative out because really, no one wants to hear you whine and complain about something that you can easily. Uh, Avoid, right? Yeah, I. You know, if if I didn't like what went on at 
whatever convention, I just don't go back. Right. And, and for us in this room and mostly everybody here, we're also part of that segment of the population for whatever God's forsaken reason that actually does stuff. So we know what it's like to get beat up on the other side of that by some basement dweller, uh, even though you're working your ass off. Right. Exactly. And, and I will admit that um, I used to be more opinionated, let's say, mm-hmm. negatively opinionated in my further, further far off youth. Since I've gotten a little older, I've amended that character flaw yep. for the most part. But I, ha- I, like I said, I'll confess to having done it because it's very easy to do. Oh, really? I mean, it it's really, really easy to fall really, into that pitfall. I mean, it was easy to do before social media. <laughs> I mean, never mind yeah, after social media. Now you can media. get it to them. <laughs> yeah. I mean. But that's, in a nutshell, that's what I pulled from that. And by talking with these people, by listening and whatever, as I was walking around making my, I think, my fifth or sixth round on Saturday going through the uh, the convention center itself, I stumbled across another podcast called Needless to Say. They're based out of uh, Warren, Rhode Island, actually. Okay. Three guys, uh, a lot like us. M- number one, they're all metalheads. They all uh, enjoy a few cocktails from time to time, just like us. And they uh, they got a, a quite a, quite the following. And they invited me back on Sunday to come hang out with them at their table for about a half hour, hour, whatever, and they interviewed me. <laughs> well, everyone was dying because I was hopped up on, well, everything you described. Sh- you know, yeah, sugar, that. burritos, <laughs> tequila. Nope. Exactly. Every, <laughs> everything just came to a head, and I was probably on my sixth soda of the morning. <laughs> You know, trying to recover from the day before. And, yeah, I probably may or may not have had uh, a cocktail on my way in. And they never saw a guy as big as you do ballet moves. (laughs) Oh, I I am like a gazelle. I am graceful as hell. So, anyways, I sat down with them for a a good probably 20, 30 minutes. And we just talked all things My Night Out Radio. Mm -hmm. But my OCD, ADHD, kicked in very badly. Mm -hmm. And as people were walking by, I was calling people out of the crowd, like Jay Wu, uh, JW's Pub. He was walking by. I stopped mid sentence. Oh, hey, Jay, how you doing? I called him over to the table, and I'm telling the guys he has great food, scallion pancake pizzas. You got to check out his, uh, you know, the the diabetic scorpion bowl. And he like the, a guy actually put the mic up to Jay Wu and made him. Tell them the recipe for the, the diabetic scorpion bowl. <laughs> and, and, you know, Jay got some publicity. I, you know, I don't know what their listenership is, but I know it's uh, substantial from what they were telling me. And uh, by the time we were done, turns out we have friends in common in the music industry. We have friends in common in promotions. And we're, we're trying to see how we can work together, like have them coming down here one night or – uh, me travel up there to where they record and right. you know record with them and how far see, away are they? Uh, Warren, Rhode Island, oh. not too far. No, not no. not a bit. Well, it's Rhode but Island. Rhode so. Island as it is, but <laughs> yeah, well, anybody else now? But uh, yeah, we had a great time. We, we we chatted and you know the guys want to keep in touch. I actually I send everyone I get a, a business card from or anyone I, I contact through Comic Con. I always make the effort within a week get after back to get back to them. Hey, it was great seeing you. Nice talking to you. Whatever. And, and like almost instantly, they got back to me like, "Yeah, it was great seeing you. We got to work together." So that's uh, most of my Comic Con stuff. The other thing I got to talk about, and, and I'm just blowing off my my Exuberance. my fourth break. No, this is my I'm just skipping over songs altogether. Just keep talking about Comic Con because well, because you're wound up about this oh, this weekend. Can you see how fast I'm talking? I'm very animated by the. Yeah, that's what I say. If, if, excited, thrilled. If we had cameras right now, you guys would see my arms flailing in the air as I'm yeah. talking. But uh, unfortunately, it's radio. You can't see that yet. Uh, that's a little jab. I'm, I'm going to talk about that probably another week or so. That's otherwise known as a teaser. That's it. <laughs> Leave you dangling. But anyways, um, the best part of Comic-Con is always the costumes. Mm-hmm. Now, we had we had talked about this earlier on, on the Chuckles show, and, and I just want to bring to the point, there is no such thing as a bad costume. I would say no. I mean, it's, um, unless it was like, very good ones. 
unless it's the the sheet over the head with the two eyes cut in it for <laughs> holes, that there are no bad costumes. Especially when you go to Comic Con, because not only did this person take the time to either make it, buy it, or what have you. But now this person is going to wear this costume for 8, 10, 12 hours maybe. Yeah. Right. And again, with, with the female costumes, less was oh, definitely more. Yeah, there's always a, it's always good when you see more than one poison ivy throughout the day. Exactly. And there was, uh, there was a, a, uh, a couple of uh, storms from the X-Men. Uh-huh. Storm came in. There was actually like two of them I saw were like almost back to back. One of them came in. She was absolutely rocking the comic book storm. Like she was like throwing the, the cape back and it looked like she was hovering down the aisle. And there was one that really didn't look like she could hover on a bet. <laughs> she could hover around some donuts? Something like that. Now, I, I'm, I'm saying a joke here because, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a little bit of a jerk on the inside. Everyone's got that little asshole in them. But to be honest with you, this girl was rocking that costume, and she owned every square inch of what little clothing she had on. <laughs> and she, between the attitude and just how she was carrying herself. She brought it off. She, she brought it off big time. And, and that, that falls back to what was said in the, uh, the podcasting thing. Don't, don't bash anybody. Find the good part in, in something because you know that person put a lot of effort, time, money, what have you, yeah, in, into that costume. And in their mind, they they, they are Storm. They right, are right. whoever. And sometimes people put multiple time, monies, and efforts because we'll see them at Kineticon as Wonder Woman. Then we'll see them at Rhode Island Comic Con as you know Storm. And then we'll see them somewhere else. I mean, they have multiple uh, like theatrical quality costumes. Well, I, I do have to. I have a confession, and everyone already knows I had the foot surgery. No big deal there. But I had to delay a costume that I was going to build. I actually started making a costume for Comic-Con. I didn't know if I was going to actually even make Comic-Con this year because I didn't know how surgery and everything else was going to work, recovery. So I put it on a back burner. I regret that now because Deadpool 2 just released a couple months ago now. One evil character that was in there who was very large and very covered up. Hmm. Do you know who I'm talking about? I haven't seen it yet. Tony? No. Juggernaut? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh I know the Juggernaut character. Yeah. Well, the Juggernaut Well, he was in Deadpool too. Okay. Yeah. So I actually started working on the Juggernaut costume. I got it so far as to making most of the helmet, the the, the helm, whatever you want to call it. Right. Uh, um. Unfortunately, mine was made out of blow foam and not granite or, or what have you because it would have probably crushed my neck. But I started making this costume for Comic-Con. I was like, you know what, back burner it, and I regret that. So, Well, it'll, if it'll be there for next any, year. And, I, and, if, and, and if next year is anything like this year, it will be here before we know it. Oh, yeah. well, I was talking to a few people. That are already saying start signing up for stuff coming up in March, April, and May. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's uh, actually another convention, uh, December first or second, something like that. I don't have the paperwork in front of me, but it's geared more towards females, female costumes, female actors, and what have you. But it, it's not, you know, it's not the feminist. Con right, or whatever. Right, it's not, it, okay. it, everyone's welcome, but they just want to have the focus on women because it's to support. I, I believe it's uh, domestic violence is, is the uh, the benef- benefactor of the proceeds. Right, so they're just tending toward advancement for women. Exactly. Speaking. Yeah. But again, everyone is invited, and I'll have more information about that next week because we are running. We are out of time. Yes, yeah, hour flew by. Whew. Well, <laughs> I can't do a second hour because I barely made the first one. <laughs> Between the energy I spent from that and, again, I, I just have been on a dead run since fr- Friday. I worked my I got up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I didn't get home till 10, 11 o'clock at night. And Saturday, Sunday, I, I literally each night I would fall into bed and I would wake up in the same exact position I landed in. It's a good thing you didn't fall asleep in your juggernaut <laughs> costume. <laughs> Imagine opening the door for the mailman like that. <laughs> He's seen me in worse. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for listening in again. Don't forget, my night out radio at Verizon.net. If you want to get on the air with me, if you want to promote something, if you want to advertise something, if you just want to sit in the bo- in the uh, studio with us and, and chat. Uh, also, Facebook forward slash my night out, Twitter, Instagram, DJ Psycho Eddie, and don't forget our website, mynightoutri.com for all your upcoming events. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. We're going to leave here with uh, the Rollins band, Monster. Have a good night, everybody. Mm-hmm.